What is the relationship between fish? How should they be grouped together? Well, if we were to compare modern fish, obviously we have the benefit of studying all of their anatomy and even then sampling their genes. And so one could use, say, genetic uh, sequence comparisons to group uh, fish. And one notices that there is a nested hierarchy of groups where they are all related, but to varying degrees. And we can even include fossil fish in anatomical analyses using uh, as many traits uh, as are present in individual fossils. And one also then observes a nested hierarchy of relationships uh, between fossil fish. Not only uh, do these analyses demonstrate a relationship between groups, but also the notion that complexity is built in stages so that jawless fish are related to other fish but to varying degrees. The earliest jawless fish are the most primitive. Later jawless fish are more closely related to the jawed fish having developed bone and pectoral fins. When jawed fish evolved they were not the jawed fishes of today and the most primitive jawed fishes known as placoderms are completely extinct today so the uh, anatomy of modern jawed fishes evolved over stages with the most primitive stage belonging to placoderms. And placoderms varied. Some actually have more similarities to the jawed fishes which would uh, come later, like the bony osteichthyan fish, including having some bones around the jaws which are present in these osteichthyan fish which are lacking in all other placoderms. So, uh, here not only do, is a relationship demonstrated, uh, but varying degrees with some placoderms being more closely related uh, to later fish than others and thus being transitional forms. Cartilaginous fish and acanthodians uh, are intermediate between the most primitive jawed fish, the placoderms, and the bony jawed fish, the osteichthyans. Not only are these groups intermediate, but also there are cartilaginous fish which have features of the bony fish in the fossil record, and acanthodians which are more similar to the cartilaginous fish than others. And so in this nested hierarchy, we see varying degrees of relationship re reflecting the gradual evolution of intermediate forms. The first bony fish to appear in the fossil record are not the teleos, which represent almost all bony fish alive today. These teleos would not appear until the age of dinosaurs in the Triassic period. The earliest bony fish were all transitional forms, having some but not all of the features of the later teleost fish, and still retaining features which are associated with cartilaginous fish or with acanthodians, or with placoderms. And so we see uh, in the anatomical studies of fossil fish in the Paleozoic era, not just relationships where these groups of fish are not uh, independent, but rather related to each other, but a series of relationships where some are more closely related to others, and there are transitional forms which have some but not all of the features of later groups, and often have uh, features typical of two different groups of fish showing an intermediate condition between them.